thanks for coming. I know this is a little bit later than it was last year, so I appreciate the uh, showing up even though the deadlines are kind of coming up soon. Um, I'm not going to spend too long bobbing around at the beginning because we have six to get through. Um, I think Charlie's going to go up first talking about SETI. So, yeah, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoy and try to come up. All right. Uh, Berkeley SETI. You've probably heard of it. If you haven't, that's okay. I'll explain real quick. Um, so, who are SETI and what do they do? SETI are the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. So, uh, you're talking your ETs of the world. Uh, basically, they scan space for radio waves, alien radio waves, or anything that is like a radio wave, communication, anything like that. Uh, specifically, the internship is for Breakthrough Listen, which is currently the largest SETI initiative. Um, and as I said there, it's searching for signals in the sky, right? So the internship is a research internship. It's 10 or 12 weeks during the summer. It, it kind of depends on how many interns they take on. Uh, so it'll be late June to usually late August. Uh, you'll be working under Professor Evan Keane, who is the head of ILOFAR, which is uh, one of the lowest frequency radio telescopes uh, in the world. It's brilliant. Um, and also, a certified cool guy. So he's really great to work with. If you can work with Evan Keane ever, really recommend it. Uh, so what is the internship? So the first week of the internship is actually a week of lectures run by Berkeley, California. Uh, it's really brilliant. They'll give you, uh, I think it's about 10 lectures, Python, Pulsars, machine learning. You're talking some of the greatest professors currently going, all working with Berkeley to deliver really cutting edge lectures on their research. It's so interesting. And then after that, from those lectures that you do, Evan will either give you data that he has been working on or whatever, or you can tell him, I was really interested in this, can I do a project on that? Um, and he will find a project for you to do, basically, whatever you're interested in related to SETI. Uh, we also got to visit ILOFAR, which is in Burr Castle. Um, I always say up the north. That is incorrect. I drove there, and I have no idea how I don't know where it is. But if you look it up, you'll find out where Burr Castle is. Um, you also get access to ILOFAR and the SETI databases. So it's really interesting. They're like really uh, cagey about it. Um, but it's very fun because you have access to all this data. Right? Uh, it's extremely programming heavy. So obviously, if this is physics, most of you probably do like programming or you have a good uh, grasp of programming. It's a very programming heavy internship. Um, anything like Linux, if anyone has ever used Linux, uh, stuff like Docker, these are all really important. If you don't have that, don't let it persuade you not to apply. Still apply. But if you have any familiarity with that, mention it in your application because these things are really important. Um, you also get to attend all of the Trinity Astro meetings, uh, which are once a week. It's not actually a part of the internship, but Evan invites you anyway, and it's very fun. You also can go to lunch with all the professors if you want to. I don't know anyone who actually did it. So it's also 600 a week is the stipend, so it's a really well-paying internship. Um, so here's I love her. Uh, she's very uh, not interesting to look at, but I felt like I had to put in, this is her best picture, I would say. Um, millions, millions of euros worth of, of technology right there. Once again, one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest telescopes going for radio telescopes, right? Uh, so eligibility and applications. So you just have to be an undergraduate or a master's student. Um, as I said before, programming experience, it's not required, it's really recommended, and the more you have, the better it'll look for you. Um, the main thing though is, especially because you have to understand if any of you have ever worked with Evan Keane, Evan Keane is running, uh, he reads your CVs and all that. Show knowledge and interest in SETI. Don't just be like, uh, you know, oh, I'm really good at this, I'm really good at that, whatever. Show interest in SETI itself. SETI has a bunch of like, you have like stuff like SETI at home. Um, yeah, the movie Contact I have up there, and I, I've said it already to someone else, uh, they're all obsessed with this movie. This is my favorite movie growing up, but they're all obsessed with this movie. It was written by a man called uh, Carl Sagan. Uh, he wrote the book, the book is brilliant. They will give you a free copy of the book with the internship. That's how much they love Contact. Watch the movie Contact. Also, Jodie Foster is in it. Pretty excited to win, right? So for the application, you need a transcript, which is really easy. You just email the academic registry, uh, your CV, uh, a recommendation letter from a professor. Uh, so if you want to apply, I know the, it, the deadline is February 1st. Get on a recommendation letter. That's the thing that's probably going to take the longest. And your cover letter. I have the link there for applying for the internship. Right, so like I said, February 1st is when applications close. You don't have a lot of time. You have like what, like a week now? Uh, get on it though. So if you want to do it, like really get on it. Get on asking for recommendations. Professors are 
notoriously busy and cagey. Uh, find a professor that you've worked with that will give you a good, um, a good like recommendation and talk to them about it. So just as an example, this was my research project. I did ORAT. So ORATs are, uh, it stands for Rotating Radio uh, Transient. They're basically pulsars that go quiet out of nowhere. And for a really long time, we never knew why. This summer, a paper came out explaining that it was actually because of extreme pulse-to-pulse -pulse modulation. So every time it was like giving us a pulse, the frequency of that pulse was changing. And eventually, it was just going out of frequency for the telescopes that we were using to observe them. So it wasn't that they were going silent. It's that we couldn't hear them anymore. So my uh, project was using iLofer to try and look at a specific aura. So this is the diagram. It's a pulsar with a rat in front of it. That's not what they look like. That is a, an, artist, an artist's interpretation, right? Uh, but there you go. There's my single pulse. We didn't find it, unfortunately, but it was a fun try. And uh, most of it was actually just analyzing pulsar data, which was really fun, really great. It's really a great experience. Um, so that was my personal research project. Uh, just to finish off, it's a great opportunity. You get great contacts. You're talking about, like, I, you know people from Berkeley then. You meet people from, like, they're Italian uh, interns, all sorts. They're coming from everywhere. And you're put in this big, uh, it's called a Slack. Has anyone have to use Slack before? Yeah, you get put in a Slack with basically really great people who are all um, to do with SETI. You meet a bunch of PhD students and stuff like that. It gives you some great contacts. Um, and if you, so if you have any interest, even if you don't think you'll be good at it or whatever, apply, full stop. Um, in general, though, just as some advice for internships, because this is an internship talk. Um, if you want to get an internship, look at what you're applying for and show interest in what you're applying for. Like, as I say here, your passion and interest for whatever you're interning for matters way more than your grades. They want to see that you care about what you're doing, not that you get like all first whatever. And if you feel you're not good at something, that's literally fine. Show the passion and show that you're willing to work for it, and they'll, they're much more likely to uh, give you the time of day. Um, and I, I've said this here as well, and uh, actually Mero Ferreri, uh, Ferreri told me this. If you have a professor you think would be fun to work with, look at what they do. It's on the website. Email them and say, I saw that you work on this. I love this. Can I have an internship? And, and chances are, maybe they'll say no, but put it out there. Don't look for internships to come to you. Don't just look for, oh, internship at this place. Put it out there, contact professors, talk to them. You never know. You might get an opportunity. Uh, my email is there if anyone wants any questions about SETI that they don't want to ask here. Uh, good luck with any applications that you do, and thank you for listening. That's it. Uh, is there any questions, though, while I'm here? Oh, yeah. Uh, first years can't apply. I'm pretty sure first years can't apply. I think first years can't apply if you're an American, but I'm pretty sure first years can't apply uh, if you're Irish. So. Excellent. I have to go to work. So thank you very much for listening, um, and I'm gone. <laughs>
and it's, it doesn't have any US dollars, but as we'll see pretty quickly, uh, it's, it's all about you think of it. And so what, where is Notre Dame? So it's right under, like, underneath Michigan, and it's in Indiana, and it's this kind of super rich neighborhood in a pretty shitty town called South Carolina. Uh, and this is here, it's very beautiful and, and uh, nice to look at. Um, you'll be staying on campus, so I'm working there. Yeah, so uh, about the application process, if you're a third year, uh, fortunately you won't be able to do this anymore. Um, if you're in first and second year, you can apply. I think the criterion is that you have to have at least one year of undergraduate left for you to apply. Uh, the application deadline is the 15th of December. It was the 30th of January last year, so I'm uh, unlucky. Um, there's a there's a Trinity point of contact. So because uh, it's for all Irish students across the, the island, each university has a point of contact for the for the fellowship. And I think for us, it's John Bowen in the School of Chemistry. Um, you'll need kind of the standard stuff, so a statement of, of intent. So explaining why you'd be a good uh, uh, candidate. You need two recommendations, and you need a transcript. And because there's only one physics student, uh, I guess make sure you get good grades. Uh, there's no interview process, so I just got an email uh, on the 12th April, which is a little bit late, because you have only one month to apply for the visa before flying, uh, before flying. And it's not that quick. So basically, if you do get accepted, every time you get an email saying you need this, you just do it as soon as you can. Um, and the visa expires, but you have a two-week, I think, um, window where you can stay in the US and, and be a tourist. That's pretty cool. OK, so as I said, you'll, you'll be living on campus. So uh, it's quiet because it's the summer. There's no one there other than RE students and some, some of the, the research staff. And you'll be living in single sex dorms. It's a pretty Catholic university. That's how it works during the semester, and it's also how it works during the summer. Uh, you'll probably almost certainly have a shared room. I thought that was pretty great. I had a good roommate who was into Astro. Um, he was great despite being into, uh, into Astro. And um, <laughs> he was uh, a motivating presence in my room. I couldn't just go home and, and laze about. He was on overly full. Okay, uh, they have really good facilities because they're super rich. 80 grand a year to go there if you're an undergraduate, so they kind of have like the best facilities uh, available. Um, they have two indoor football stadiums, I think. Uh, you, if you, you, you won't have a car realistically, so you're gonna have to ask friends in the program to drive you to supermarkets, um, uh, which is fine. They were always willing and offered, and they were super nice. And the total expenses, so dorms are 2,000 US dollars, and the flights, uh, return flights are only 1,000, so that's quite a lot. And then. Uh, just living, and then if you want to travel at all uh, afterwards, it's going to be expensive as well. So you're walking home with about, I think, 3,000, 2,500 net euros, which is still pretty good. Uh, so yeah, so the social aspect. So a, a lot of internships kind of are, 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 are super uh, uh, social, I think, and this one is definitely the case. So most people work in the US. There's a training university that has um, two slots per year, and they're already uh, close up. And yeah, they're all nerdy. So uh, You'll, you'll, you'll fit in probably, and then I've made some friends that I'm, I still talk to, and I, I'm kind of, I, I give them advice about things that I've learned about, and, and the other way around. And we did loads. I'll, I'll, I'll show you pictures at the end of everything we did because I think it's worth seeing kind of how much you do outside of the research. That, that that was a big part of the experience was going to the U.S. and experiencing all these things that uh, you wouldn't otherwise. And yeah, a few of the people um, uh, cried, which was, I didn't. Um, uh, so yes, the, the, the actual research was pretty important. Uh, you will pick a project, there's a list on the website of all the projects, and you will pick one and a supervisor, and you don't have to contact them, and you will apply for that project. Um, Notre Dame is pretty heavily focused on nuclear and astro, um, and nuclear astrophysics, so if you're into that, that helps. It's mostly experiment, so I got kind of the only theory project, uh, with me and this other guy working with our with my supervisor. Um, it is mostly experiment. And yeah, so do that what, what you will. Um, th that, and that's because the university uh, just has loads more experimentalists than theory uh, researchers. Uh, every week, you will have a new seminar from one of the staff there, and you'll eat during it. And it felt kind of rude, but they were fine with it. So, uh, and they were all interesting. They all kind of showed me a new part of physics that I hadn't heard about or, or thought about uh, ever. Uh, this kind of a, a timeline of what it would be like for your project. So the first week you land, you kind of get to know everyone and you uh, get settled. You'll have to buy loads of things for the dorms because they only give you like a, a, a mattress basically and the furniture. I'll show you a picture. 
Um, so the first few weeks you're just going to learn and get used to everything around you and the material that you will probably read beforehand. And then week, weeks four to six you're going to be doing all the, all the hard work and getting results hopefully. And then week seven to nine you'll be writing your first draft, hopefully getting your last results, um, and then also writing your final draft. And then the last week, five minutes, um, you're going to not be on campus anymore, you'll be kicked out, so you can either go travel or whatever, and you have to give a presentation. Uh, so, and this kind of just, I'll go quickly for this. So this is kind of like a typical PP timeline. So first year, there's no, there's no responsibility on you being an extra curricular academic. And then second year, you should be starting to do things to boost your portfolio um, if you want to go into academia or an industry job. And in third year, uh, I think third year is the most important because of how many internship opportunities there are and how much it matters for your uh, postgrad applications, which is the, because you're gonna have your third year uh, transcript. Okay, and TP, um, you say goodbye to the, or in fourth year, you say goodbye to Hamilton and you become an adult. And so yeah, here, here, here's some pictures. So we, we were actually quite uh, close friends. This was, I was watching Oppenheimer um, during the internship. This is a, a girl who uh, came to Trinity and I saw her when they, when they all came. She's actually in the, in the band. Uh, this is us doing a picnic where we put a lot of food. This is me uh, messing about, I don't know. There was a planetarium, they have so many cool facilities. Uh, this is where I work for most of the time, it's the physics lounge. Um, this is literally, this was everything I used. Uh, so yeah. um, mini fridge, because you'll need a place to store your food. We went to an orchestra, we went wall climbing, we went to a gun shop. Uh, <laughs> this is actually just a normal fishing shop, sports shop, so I don't know, it's a bit weird, but yeah. Uh, this is our first dinner. Let's see, this is the beautiful Golden Dome, um, which is kind of the iconic bit of it. And then this is me and my friends in New York. The, they're both in the course. This is Tom and Charlie. Um, this is our, our final Zoom presentation. This was my su su supervisor's board after a meeting. Uh, this is the stadium. This is us hanging out in the dorms, us at the Bean in Chicago, us in Chinatown in Chicago, me with uh, the tourist attraction, and then supervisor writing. This was us at the observatory. Terrible light pollution, but they have it anyway. Um, this is us in dorms. They can't drink, but we did. And this is Carlos, my roommate, smiling because he's, uh, I don't know, I don't know why he's smiling, but yeah, this is the, the, the museum in Chicago, the Field Museum. And this is my room, so it's kind of bare. Uh, I had to buy all the stuff that wasn't uh, just the mattress and the furniture. And this is us saying goodbye to the dorms. Um, and yeah, and if you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, and just before I finish, my friend Tom, who founded uh, a summer accelerator called Patch, wanted me to uh, explain this to you. So it's uh, not really an academic thing at all. You'll be working with people who are doing startups, or if you have your own idea, you can do it. Um, I would invite you to look at the info, because I don't know that much about it beyond what he's told me. I've seen it a few times on, uh, on the website. But it's kind of more of a um, startup business uh, opportunity. And if you have nothing else going on in first and second year, this is kind of what you, sh you could do instead of uh, working a standard job that wouldn't help you uh, more otherwise. And this is Tom with an inspirational quote. I think that is it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions about internship or anything? Yeah, where do you find the list of topics? Uh, it's on the Nothing Fellowship website, so uh, I think if you just look up Nothing Fellowship, there'll be a website for the records. Yeah. What was your research on? It was on nuclear theory, uh, looking at how isospin symmetry can uh, mess up um, approximation of beams for. So, yeah, I'm not going to get into much of it. Uh, if you email me, I can send you a presentation about it if you want. But it's, it was the only theory project, and it was still computational. Uh, so, Notre Dame has some high, high energy theory, but they weren't offering any RU projects, and they're not, um, I guess, they just weren't. Also, if you have any questions about anything in general about TP, you can email me as well. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm going to. I'm. My name's Thomas. I'm going to talk about uh, Hamilton Trust. Uh, Hamilton Trust uh, is internships that take place in Trinity under the School of Maths. Um, it's, uh, so I think there's an organization called the Hamilton Trust, and they 
uh, they've sponsored this internship, so that, like, that's the school might put it. They can give a, a modest uh, stipend to, to the students doing it. So what is involved in the internship? This is a six-week internship. Uh, it starts in like early, early May or mid-May. Um, products are involved in, in, in individual projects or groups of two or three. Um, and the research project must be with a TCD faculty uh, member. Uh, yep. The, so you, how, how it works is you meet up just once a week. It was on a Wednesday, I think, last time. And you would hear you give like, so each week three people would give a talk on what their project's on. And if it was early on, it would just be like what they're going to do. If it was towards the end, people would be more talking about what they've done. I was like, towards the end. So I talked about a little about what I would have done. And uh, in the last week, there's a poster session. So you've got to make a poster and then put them up on a, in uh, the math help group. And then um, anyone can come in, and su students and supervisors, and you can like talk to each other about each other's research. It's very cool. Learn a lot. And you also have to write a final report at the end. Uh, there's no real like requirement on this. I think it's just because like the guy who sends the money likes to be able to read about the stuff he sponsored, which I guess is is reasonable. But um, <laughs> there's there's no like requirement in the report. Mine was mine was like 30 pages or something. I don't know. I don't think there's any. It's not they don't grade it or anything. All right. So industry start mid May last year. It was 15 to the 30th, which is quite quite soon after exams. I think I had a week off after exams, and then I was doing this. But yeah, but it's not too long. Like you finish 30th of June, you still have two months of summer left. So it's it's pretty nice to have have that long. It's not totally committal. Uh, the deadline applications announced via email. The the school maps will will uh, you'll hear about that. It's usually later on. I think it was like mid February. Um, yeah. So it's open to uh, undergrads, maths, joins honor math students, theoretical physics students, and also available for exiting uh, exchange students. Uh, any, any undergrad year can apply. So it doesn't matter whether you're in first year, it's all the way to fourth years can apply. All right. It is funded. But, and interns will seem lump sum of the internship. So it depends on the project group you're in. If you're by yourself, it's 900. But if you're in a group of two, it's uh, uh, more, but because it's split between you, it's, it's less per person. So fifth one, it's about six, uh, 1,600 and, and then about two pounds per group of three. So you get more, but like 900 for six weeks, that's 150 a week. I spent way too much working a week, like 40 hours. Divide 150 by 40, it's not a great number. But it, it's, 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 I didn't think of it that way. I thought it was, I was doing something I liked, so I didn't even... I forgot about the money and I got at the end, I was like, oh great, I got paid for, for doing something I like. So that's how I like to look at it. So uh, the application both for us is a, it's a lot different to the other ones you'll see. It, they don't care, it's not very grade based. It's more about you, plot, you go to a supervisor, so I would recommend a professor, a class you really enjoy, or as Charlie mentioned earlier, like someone who's a uh, professor you really like and look at the research and if that's something you think you'd be interested in, contact them about it. I can't stress enough how, how having a, a supervisor who you think you could work with really well is really important. They say this for PhDs as well. Uh, it's, it's someone who like, you know will respond to your emails and not like, just push you off is very important. My internship was with Evan, the same person Charlie was working with. So he's, he was really great. He um, like, uh, allowed me to do loads of stuff with him. Mean, a lot more than the internship itself uh, provides. So that's very important. So professors must be from School of Maths, uh, but they can also be from, sorry, they can also be from School of Physics and Computer Science. Um, providing for object is sufficiently mathsy. I think they literally say that in the, um, in the application thing. You do not need to produce the project ID yourself. Your supervisor can help with this, and they can also help you write the proposal. That was very helpful from Evan. Um, yeah, it, the proposal is strictly one-page document describing like background details, objectives, and tasks for the project. And yeah, I recommend not to be to to, to, to be not to be too general. Spend put a lot, a lot of information on there. Have like references. I even had like a graph on mine. That you can uh, get into much details you want. That's good. All right. So yeah, this is my research project. I was doing testing theories of gravity using pulsars. So this was supervised by Dr. Dr. Evan Keane. 
And I, I use pulsars as a medium to look at other theories of gravity, to like, um, I was analyzing um, binary systems, and I was seeing how the binary parameters change because of effects like general relativity and other theory of gravity. And then we can observe these systems and observe some observable properties. And then we see do these observable properties line up with the, uh, with the, the theory. And if they don't, well, that we can chuck away that theory. It's obviously wrong. So yeah. And this is in a very bad image of I love for where I also want to go. But yeah. Thanks for listening. Any more? Any questions? Yeah. I don't think so. I think it is only for people related to math. I'm sorry. Yep. Very good. Now he's, he's very, he responds to emails like quite like as soon as you send them. He, and like he, he he got me to do other stuff. Like uh, Charlie was talking about weekly astro meetings. Um, I even presented at one of those to like people who are in the uh, astrophysics department, and, and that was good. That was a good experience. It really, it really is helpful to have a, a very good supervisor. Yeah. All right, that's all. Uh, thank you. I'm Matthew. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Laid Law Undergraduate Leadership and Research Program. Um, yeah, uh, so far I've only experienced the research side of that, um, so that's mostly what I'm going to be talking about. Carl's going to come after me and uh, hopefully give a better overview having finished. Um, but yeah, so the main thing is uh, it's a two summer uh, internship. So uh, when you get accepted, uh, you're, you're in it for 18 months. Uh, you do a six-week project uh, each summer. So the first summer, that's a research project. And that is uh, in Trinity, um, unless you have something else uh, organized abroad. But I'll talk about that in a second. And then the second summer, you do a leadership in action project, uh, which can be kind of um, general working with an NGO unrelated to your research project, or it can be um, maybe applying some of the research you uh, did in the first summer uh, in a kind of more for the good of humanity kind of way, uh, or it can kind of be something that's based on your field uh, of study, be that maths or physics, and um, that's, again, uh, for social good. So that's kind of the main point of the second summer is that you're looking to uh, do something that is uh, making a positive impact on society. Uh, so as a DP or a math student or a physics student, uh, that usually means uh, getting involved in science outreach or um, yeah, general communication. Uh, sometimes it can be something more applied. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about in a second what, what I don't have organized yet, but I'm trying to. Uh, as well as the two summers, you also are signing up for uh, five lead days. Um, so they're kind of evenly enough distributed across the, the 18 months or so. Um, in terms of what they are, uh, they're meant to be kind of focusing on that leadership word in the title of the uh, whole program. And, you know, some people are definitely signing up for this internship or program not because of the research and they're signing up because of the leadership, um, and they want to like, you know, they're maybe into uh, business or whatever, and you know, want to be a CEO, um, but that's definitely not what the idea of the lead days is. It's definitely not trying to turn you into um, Steve Jobs or something. Uh, it's much more kind of about personal development and all of that, because you know, the majority of people doing the program 
are probably not going to end up being uh, CEOs or wanting to. So uh, in terms of how many people get into it a year, it's 25 or so. Um, it's pretty elastic. They kind of choose something around that each year, and uh, it doesn't have to be constant. So uh, yeah, it's not a competition to, for a certain amount of places. It's really just whoever they feel um, they want to choose. Uh, yeah, and I guess if you're sitting here going, well, why would you sign up for a leadership program? There is the research element, and it is one of the better paid uh, research internships you can do for a six-week period. Uh, so the total value of the scholarship is nearly 9,000. Um, so yeah, each summer, 3,500 in your pocket, and you have uh, 1,900 across the 18 months to pay for uh, flights, or um, say you have to get materials, or uh, maybe kind of hardware, software for actually undertaking your research, uh, that's what the 1900 is there for. And you're definitely encouraged to you know, use as much of that as you can because it's there for you to use. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I should talk about my research project and I guess maybe uh, more importantly like the applying side of things. Well, first off, uh, if you're here and you're in third year, then it, this is not for you um, because unless you're doing a five-year course, which I don't think anybody here is probably doing, uh, you have to have uh, two summers left still being an undergraduate. So this is for the second years and for the first years next year. Um, and if you're thinking of maybe applying for this, uh, it's definitely time to get, to get working on it uh, because the, um, the deadline for signing up is in the next three weeks, I think. Uh, so what you have to do in that time is basically come up with a fairly uh, specific idea of what you're going to do for a research project, uh, find a supervisor, um, and you, you can find that research project like with the supervisor's help or just approach somebody and be like, do you want to help me with this? And then you also have to have maybe had a kind of preliminary look at what kind of leadership in action project you could be suitable for doing. Um, and the important thing is that uh, part of the program is that one of the two six weeks has to be abroad. So unless you've already reached out to somebody uh, in a different country who's doing research that you'd like to get involved in, uh, that's going to end up being the leadership in action uh, side of things. Um, so yeah, so m most people end up doing the research in Trinity and then going abroad for leadership in action. Uh, then there are like four or five leadership and action projects that are kind of um, you know, centrally organized that you can kind of sign up to something that's already been organized and kind of join in. Um, but you can also kind of go out on your own and say to whoever you want to, you know, I've got money and I want to come help you. Uh, will you take me in? Um, so that's kind of a, a bit of an advantage, I guess. So like you can look at the leadership in action and I think, you know, maybe some people might be thinking, I want to do uh, research at, uh, in the summer between second year and third year, and then again in the summer between third year and fourth year. And you might be looking at the re leadership in action and going, geez, you know, I'm in STEM, I don't want to be doing leadership in action. But like, it's an opportunity to reach out to literally whoever you want and uh, say, you know, I want to get involved. And you know, it, it, it's, not, it's not completely crazy because you are being, you do have money from elsewhere to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess, just to give you an idea, if you're thinking of applying, uh, my research project was based on ACM1 because that was my favorite module up until when I had uh, applied. And I was basically applying machine learning, uh, trying to teach it how to figure out symmetries using Noether's theorem, um, which hopefully second years will understand at this stage. Um, and then for leadership in action, I'm still working on trying to, you know, get somebody to say, yeah, sure, we're definitely going to take you in for that, those six weeks. Um, but the two groups or um, organizations that I'm uh, kind of currently going back and forth with are CERN and um, the Ocean Cleanup. So, um, yeah, that's what I mean when I'm saying, like, you can kind of just say to whoever you want to, uh, look, I've got 
I've got enough money to stay in X country for six weeks. Will you give me some work for that time? Um, so yeah, uh, definitely recommend. Um, I know Carl's going to come and maybe fill in some blanks that I missed there. But uh, if anybody has any questions, ask me now or email me or find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'll be happy to answer anything. So. Yeah. Questions? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, well, like I said, I liked ACM one, so I kind of thought that um, something kind of, I guess it was the most theoretical thing we come across uh, from that stage, um, and I didn't want to be maybe doing lab physics work. Uh, or that, if that makes sense. Um, and I also knew I had a certain amount of ability with Python, so. <laughs> Uh, took it as an opportunity to learn about machine learning better. Um, and yeah, I'd done intro to programming with Kirk Sudhalter uh, in first semester, second year. Um, so yeah, I was kind of, in terms of coming up with a specific uh, project, uh, I was kind of going through um, classical mechanics um, papers and kind of seeing what are people actually doing with classical mechanics these days. And a lot of it was like, um, you know, rigid body uh, control and that kind of stuff. And I came across something that was talking about symmetries, and I was like, oh yeah, I, I could do something with that. And uh, yeah, some, somebody had done something similar, learning symmetries, and I kind of thought I could do that a different way. So um, kind of reapproached the problem from a different point of view. Um, but yeah, in terms of y you, if you want to do research in something that's not um, like specifically maths or physics, or is like it can be completely. Nothing to do with math and for physics if you want to. Um, they're like definitely open to that. Uh, one of the big things to emphasize in all your applications and I guess any kind of interaction you have with interviewers is like what the impact of what you're doing is, which is kind of like was nearly the challenge when you're like doing a, something theoretical with uh, machine learning and symmetries. But you know you can always create a chain of effect where it's like you know. We get better at finding symmetries, we get better at computationally modeling things, we get better at making life-saving drugs, and then people can't go really go, oh, that's not, that's not the impact. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely say that if you're thinking of applying, that's the kind of thing you want to uh, keep in mind, impact. And I, 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 they've definitely changed the application process a bit. Uh, there was a video I had to send in about like my leadership attributes and all this kind of stuff, but uh, you know, it's just mo most of the stuff that isn't like talking about stuff you like is just going to be like a bit of personal reflection. So, uh, you know, a bit of that as well. Anything else? So mine is also on late law, uh, but I guess I'll skip over a few bit parts of it um, and mainly get talk about the second summer. Um, 
first of all, my email is there. And also Joel, who kind of runs it, is also there. I, I reached out to him and said, just if you have any questions, um, obviously there's the website, and then you can email him as well. Uh, so first of all, it's a kind of international program. So you have some of the best universities in the world, uh, like from you know, like Hong Kong, London, uh, over in the States, everywhere, um, and then Trinity, of course. Uh, right up there with Cambridge and uh, uh, things like that. Um, but the really cool thing about Laidlaw is that it's so interconnected with all these things. So you have a kind of internal social network that you have to join, which you can kind of contact everyone with through. Um, so like I would, I would have reached out to loads of people for trying to organize my second summer. Um, I would reached out to people like all in the States and in Hong Kong as well, um, trying to get them. And like because they, everyone signs up to be contacted on it, you kind of can't ignore it. You have to reply at least a little bit. Um, so it's a really interesting part of the program is that you have kind of these contacts around the world. Um, yeah, like I said, you have to be second year uh, unless you're doing an integrated masters. Um, the timeline is so the 12th of February is when the applications close. So yeah, you've got two, two and a bit, two, two to three weeks. Um, you do a few of the meetings. You meet the provost, all that kind of stuff. Uh, first summer, you do your six weeks come back, you write a report, and you make a poster, and make a few blog posts on that network and stuff. Um, start doing a bit more of the leadership stuff, and then a few more leadership training days, and then you go into your second summer, which I guess is what I'll focus on more. Um, leadership in action is a bit of a weird uh, phrase phraseology, but it kind of is what it is. <laughs> you actually do need to apply kind of things that you've been trying to use, learn throughout these whole uh, lead days. and all the resources they give you, and then you finally write a report up, and then graduate, and then you're gone. Um, yeah, so I'll just go over it quickly. So well, it turns out the money has increased, so Matthew got paid more than me, which is great. Um, next, year. <laughs> next year, yeah, next year, it's, it's going up, guys. Uh, get in while it's low. Um, yeah, so six weeks in summer one, six weeks in summer two, just kind of, you need to put reports and stuff in. You need to do a certain. You have to show up to your trainings and stuff, um, and I think they actually make you pay it back if you kind of leave halfway through. So uh, don't do that. Um, you do get yeah, the seven thousand uh, plus. Then that they do travel funding. So I know a lot of people went to conferences and stuff. Uh, I think someone went to Spain for the weekend just to go to some like uh, I don't know rectifier conference that happened to be in Spain at the time. Uh, you know, all these kinds of things. Um, yeah, you do research and then you do the leadership in action. Um, yeah, so the research, I guess we've already kind of talked about it. You don't have to come up with the research yourself. Uh, I know, obviously Matthew did, uh, but I literally just emailed my supervisor. I copied and pasted, not copied and pasted, but I looked at what he did and just said, I, am, I love this. And I sent the exact same email to about 30 other professors, uh, which said, I'm really interested in your specific field. Uh, so that was all good. Uh, then the second is the leadership in action, and it's actually a really interesting part of the program. So I joined the program purely for the research, essentially. I thought it was an interesting program, kind of, but I, this wasn't too big on my radar. I was more kind of, I want to do some research. And it turns out that this kind of part of it has actually had way more of an impact on me than the kind of research. Obviously, the research helped a lot, especially for applying for other things, like getting um, getting to do other research and stuff, but the Leadership in Action project like, really kind of made me think a lot more about how I don't live in like, such a science bubble, like how you actually have to exist in the world and kind of, um, if you want things to change or want things to do things, you kind of have to not just sit there and be like, oh, I just need to think and do stuff. You actually have to you know, use your leadership skills. Um, but yeah. Uh, like, we said before, there's three ways you can do it. Central, which is kind of like they organize it for you with a kind of bigger company or a bigger um, NGO. And so then you'll actually be going with maybe 10 to 15 other scholars from all of the other universities um, to a certain place. Usually, it obviously has to, be, it has to be away at least one summer. So they go to like Fiji, all these sorts of things. There is a bit of a volunteerism vibe sometimes. If you're not very comfortable with that, you can just organize your own one. Um, and like Matthew said earlier, it's great. You can just go somewhere, and they give you a certain amount of money, and they say just do something you think would be good, 
and kind of thinking about what you think would be good really kind of makes you assess kind of your priorities and your kind of career path as well. And then the other the last one is that if you do research in a specific thing, you can then and apply it in, in a certain way. So I don't know if you know astrophysics or you know uh, ACM would have very much uh, applications uh, that you could do, but you never know. You might be able to swing it. Um, so you just can just apply your research. This is mainly for people who do like bio, like medicine or politics or economics and stuff. They can kind of go and do more of those projects. Um, but you know, you never know if you do something with solar cells. Maybe you get to go somewhere and do that. I don't know. Um, yeah, funding. Uh, and then, yeah, my experience. So if anyone can guess who my research supervisor was, uh, it was Evan Keane. Uh, <laughs> so <coughs> he just doesn't do any work. He just has all his little uh, <laughs> um, No, so Evan was my supervisor as well. I just emailed him. And I actually was interested in his research, but uh, I had to hedge my bets with all the other professors. Um, I looked at the just like solar radio mission uh, using ILOFAR. It is a cool um, place. It's a cool uh, telescope, and it, especially when it's got the whole uh, you know connection to the rest of the LOFAR system. Um, I also had to sign something saying I won't mine Bitcoin on the computers, uh, just like Charlie did. Um, I learned a lot about interferometry and stuff, so which was actually on my capstone. So that actually helped me a lot, especially when I was like. You know, I had really good like kind of resources to go back onto it at the start of my capstone. It was a really, it's a shorter kind of research. If you don't want to put your whole summer into research and maybe you want to like work and make money rather than just doing research, you know, it's kind of nicer having six weeks. And then yeah, it really helped me for my capstone and like for applying for masters, PhDs, that kind of stuff. Just being able to say like I've done research uh, really helps. So this is an, another few photos of Burr. That's like. Uh, the great refractor or great reflector reflector uh, uh, I think Leviathan was its like nickname uh, biggest telescope in the world for a very long time and then that's the uh, oh, geez, that, that has the nuclear um, the atomic clock in it for all the the timing of the uh, different interferometers so you need to have them very well timed and stuff and you know I was down in Burr for about two weeks. Uh, Laidlaw paid for my whole uh, trip down to Burr using my travel funding. I got like uh, I got travel transport down, and then um, they pay, like rented Airbnb basically for me, which was great. Um, it was really cool, nice place. Not not so much to do in Burr, but it's beautiful. It's really nice, um, and it's fun. Yeah. And then my second uh, summer, I guess uh, this is more like something that I can actually talk about that you haven't heard before. Um, is your leadership in action. So I did it with the World Science Foundation, who run World Science Festival. And it's run by Brian Green, who you probably all know, um, string theorist, kind of, uh, you know, author, string theorist guy. Um, I, yeah, I went to New York, and I was helping teach, like, extremely gifted kids uh, science, uh, which was an amazing. Like, and then we, we, so they're from all around the world. You, we bring them to New York once a year. And they get to meet all these professors. They do all these classes. And I get to meet the professors, which is also a bonus. Um, so I got to meet two Nobel laureates, John Mather and uh, Jim Peebles, which was insane. Um, and I did like yeah, did a few other things. And they, I might go back to New York in the summer, which would be cool. And yeah, I, I just like the Leadership in Action project was amazing in the fact that I just decided to email like hundreds and hundreds of people trying to do something in science outreach. And I got it. And you could just, and they, it's so much easier for them when they don't have to pay you, when they don't have to do all these sorts of things. You just, ha you just show up to them and you say, I want to do this. Can I help you with the goal of your organization? And yeah, it was amazing. Um, yeah, this is some photos from New York. Uh, it's kind of, the World Science Festival is kind of connected to Columbia University, because Brian Green is a professor there. So I was in Columbia a good bit. I saw an uh, SR-71 Blackbird, Black, Black pretty sick. I watched Top Gun on a, on a carrier ship. Um, this was the view from the office uh, on the top left, which was insane. Um, that's John Mather. So I helped him kind of make a, a course to present to the kids. Um, and these are like, in, in like very high level courses. Like most of them have done like multivariable calculus by the time they're like 14 or 15, uh, which is like absolutely mental. 
Um, World Science Festival, yeah, that was all stuff. Columbia, uh, just being in New York was amazing. Like being able to have, you know, laid law, pay for my flights out there, and like, yeah, just it's just like if you can find somewhere in the world and you can kind of convince someone that you'll help them, it's pretty amazing. Um, I got to see Manhattan Henge, which was sick, uh, and then a lot of people were also seeing Manhattan Henge at the time. Um, I made a few presentations at the World Science Festival. The world ended in New York, and yeah, that was basically it. I got to do research, got to go abroad, and I got to like genuinely benefit, like well, I, I in my opinion benefit the world by like helping these kids who may not have access to the kind of cutting edge uh, education that they can get through this program, uh, through the uh, World Science Festival. Um, yeah, there's like stuff on the website about how to find supervisors. Um, and yeah, the LIA really made the most impact. This is what you need for the application, a form, the video. It's a bit awkward, but you just have to do it. Um, proposal, LIA uh, proposal, and then a, um, a letter, probably from Evan Keane, it seems. Uh, just, <laughs> uh, yeah, and they kind of don't really, they won't look into your project as much. They take it from your supervisor. Like, your supervisor is kind of staking their reputation on the fact that it's one, like a proper, like real project, and two, that it's feasible. So it's not, um, they won't ask you very specific questions about your project, but they will look a lot more for the kind of potential for impact, growth, leadership side. Um, and then a the final thing is like the, the people I met in Laidlaw, or in Laidlaw, like both in my cohort in Trinity, and also like from meeting people, you know, we, they go, they bring you to conferences and stuff, um, was just amazing. Like the people that, that I guess I wouldn't have known anyone who was in PPES who's, uh, who's like super passionate about like this specific thing, or people in biomed who are you know looking into Alzheimer's research and stuff, and like that's their whole thing. Like that they're really into it and they know a lot, and it's just really inspiring to like meet people and have such much more diverse. Because everyone here loves physics and they're really into it, but like when you talk to someone like randomly about economics, like and they they know their stuff, it's amazing. Although I'm sure you all know your stuff so. Um, and yeah, you can contact so many people as well. Um, it was a great thing about Laidlaw. I got Brian Green's email from some guy in Columbia who's a Laidlaw student, and that's how I got my internship in New York. So it is an amazing program. I highly recommend it. And my email is at the front of these slides, so that was stupid. But reach out, or any questions, please let me know. at the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies. Um, so DIAS is basically this um, research institute in Dublin. Uh, it was set up in 1940, and the first director there was uh, Schrodinger. Uh, he worked there for like, 17 years. I think for a long time he was the only person who worked there. Um, so the studentship is a um, two-month uh, internship uh, in June and July. Um, and there's a 3,000 euro stipend attached, so it's paid in two monthly installments. And then uh, what it actually involves, I just typed up from the website, uh, it's that the School of Theoretical Physics in Dias, uh, it offers an opportunity to do a project in uh, one of the areas that they specialize in. Uh, so this is mainly uh, quantum field theory, uh, string theory, M theory, Kinect's matter, and also uh, quantum computing. Um, they typically offer uh, around five projects, and you don't have to choose the project in advance. It's more that you get accepted onto the internship, and then they will um, show you uh, what projects you can do, and then you make your choice. So, for example, last year they had uh, one project in uh, quantum field theory, uh, two in string theoretic black holes. Uh, the one I thought was the one that I ended up doing. Uh, then there's also uh, one on M theory, and then one that was more of a science communication one. Um, so it had more outreach and making a website and stuff, and that was on the fundamental concepts of nature. Um, so what's actually involved? Uh, so it starts with a, an initial session uh, where you'll sort of just meet the other students and the facilitators. And also the uh, potential supervisors will give a um, sort of overview of their project. Um, and you can ask them questions. And then after, also afterwards, uh, you can sort of just ask them more informally. And uh, in my experience, they were all really happy to, like, to go into detail about what their project would be. Um, and then after that, you have about one week to uh, think about it um, and to look over it. It does on your PDF with, uh, with like, more details of the projects. 
uh, and then you uh, give your preferences for what you want to do, and then I'll allocate them based on those. Uh, so last year when I did it, there were 12 students doing the internship, and everyone got their first preference. Uh, but they were all group projects, so between two and four students uh, worked on each project. Um, so uh, once you've made this choice, um, you'll have a, a weekly in-person meeting with your supervisor and the rest of your group if you're in a group. Uh, and there's also a weekly meeting for all the interns, um, so that you can talk more about like organizational issues or admin stuff. And also, uh, like, that's good because you can meet with people from other groups and there's a more social aspect maybe. Um, and then also you can go to the weekly seminars at Dias. Uh, they're very advanced, so uh, I'm not sure many people actually went to them. But um, yeah, if you want to know about these sort of cutting edge uh, research areas in theoretical physics, they could be interesting. Um, and then, yeah, at the end of the internship, uh, you submit a report. Um, so everyone individually submits their report. And then also your group gives a presentation um, at Dias to the other students and some of the faculty there, and there's also a Q&A session after that. Uh, so they put all the reports on their website, uh, so if you just uh, go to the summer studentship se section, you can see what everyone was doing last year. Um, so yeah, what I worked on, um, so I was in a group with um, three other students, and we worked on um, a project uh, in string theory that was based on uh, counting black hole microstates. Uh, so what I was doing mainly for the first part was really just doing background reading on string theory and supersymmetry uh, and black holes and things like that because I didn't really know anything about it before but I think everyone is really in the same boat and most people don't know much about those topics before they start. And then um, the rest of it was basically writing code in Mathematica which was uh, sort of calculating these Fourier coefficients of modular forms and then these would actually give the number of black hole microstates uh, in the string theory. So yeah, the plot there is uh, of one of the counting functions uh, in the complex plane. And then that's also the title side from our presentation. Uh, so it was mainly on the modularity of black holes. And then also uh, one of the students in my group was a pure math student, so he was more interested in the number theory of it all. So he was uh, looking into Ramanujan's uh, tau function. So it's sort of, um, you can really tell your project what you are interested in and uh, yeah, your specific tastes. Um, so yeah, why would I recommend it? Uh, the first um, thing is obviously just gaining the research experience uh, in really interesting areas of theoretical physics. So the, the work they do there is really, uh, really interesting. And um, these are sort of examples of what the other groups were doing. Um, and it was actually hard to choose between the projects because I, I would have been happy to do any of them really. Uh, so there's the, there was sort of one of them looking at changing the speed of sound and what, what effect that would have uh, on the universe. Then there was one of them, the QFT one, was looking at the spectra of uh, mixed use um, for fermions which were not derived fermions, so it was sort of uh, non standard. Then there was also the uh, lattice simulations for M theory. So, yeah, it was really interesting to see what everyone else did, and everyone uh, seemed to end up with a great project. Um, then another good thing about it is that it's uh, you can collaborate with students from other Irish universities, so you can be in a group with them, and it's uh, sort of good in that way. Um, and then, yeah, finally, you could potentially continue with your project after the conclusion of the internship. I know that a lot of supervisors are happy to do this. Uh, particularly if you find novel results, you might want to continue and maybe even get a publication out of it. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend, recommend it for those reasons. Uh, and then finally, yeah, the application procedure. I guess, yeah, one of the interesting things to note is that the deadline last year was the end of April, which is really quite late. I don't know anything else that has such a late deadline. So that makes it a good option if you haven't managed to find anything yet or if you haven't been accepted to anything yet. Um, yeah, the criteria is really just uh, that you're finishing third year and that you're on track to get a first. Um, and then they sort of have this, this idea that you have an interest in your research career. Um, then um, to actually make the application you'll need a CV, a statement of why you want to work in the relevant research area, and also a reference letter. Uh, it's quite hard to write the statement because I, I'm not sure they really expect undergraduates to know what research area they want to dedicate their career to, so I wouldn't uh, get too worried about that. But I'd say, yeah, in the CV, to sort of emphasize that you have a strong academic background is what they're looking for. And then also, I think the reference letter is really important. My supervisor said that that's what they really take into account is uh, having a strong reference. So yeah, that would be my advice to focus on those. Um, so yeah, those uh, all I really want you to say. Um, that's my email there if anyone has any questions or any questions now.
Yeah, there's, yeah, it, because the deadline is so late, I think it was only really the end of April. Uh, so I found out that I didn't get into the Hamilton, and that was the only thing that was available, and so then it was like, quite good and all that, yeah. Yeah. Do you go into Okay, yeah, um, so the weekend meeting would be in person. Um, so yeah, you're going for that. And you can you could arrange for both of your meetings to be on the same day, really. So you don't have to go in one day a week. So that might be good if you you could feasibly commute commute to it. I know some people were in Belfast and they came down uh, just on the train. And Dias also pays your travel expenses if you do that. Uh, but then if you are closer, you can go in there every day. You can work in the library um, and go to the conference room to meet with your group or whatever. Well, I'm not sure <laughs> you'd ever be able to get to stages of fully understanding the string theory because uh, it's such a broad topic. But um, I'd say, yeah, there were definitely at least three weeks of really just reading textbooks on string theory. And also, you can also supervise a lot of questions about it. Um, so yeah, it was yeah really interesting to look into string theory because it's not something you'd really see in undergrad at all. So. Hi guys, my name is Mikey, I'm a fourth year TP and I'll finish off uh, with talking about the Assure program. So this one is fairly simple so it won't take too long. Essentially the idea is um, it's sponsored by the Science Foundation of Ireland. So what you do is um, essentially in the School of Physics if you have some uh, lecture that you get on with very well, they might be offering a project uh, and you can apply for this. So the important details, it is paid, so it's uh, 2,000 euro over the course of uh, 10 weeks, about you know, 200 euro a week, that's probably on the lower end. Uh, at the very end, you'll see like a summary of, um, of all the internships mentioned so far, but you know, uh, depending on how hard you're working, that could or could not be worth it for you. Um, last year, anyway, there was nine placements available to anyone in the School of Physics, that includes TPs. Um, as far as I knew, it was probably about three or four TPs. Actually, no, I'll say about three TPs got in, and then the rest was physical science. Um, so, as I said, it's during the summer. Uh, the dates of starting and ending may vary, obviously depending on your lecture, and essentially you just need to get good results in second year. Uh, another interesting thing about this is it's probably one of the most independent and like decentralized. In, like research internships you could do. So essentially, uh, we had one single safety briefing that you only had to do if you were doing lab work, which I wasn't, but I went to it anyway, because I just wanted to meet people. Um, and apart from that, we had no correspondence at all with anyone else. So pretty much, you did this one thing, and then you just went straight into doing your research with your supervisor, and then when it was over, nothing happens. It's just over then. Uh, so here's um, what we got in the email. Uh, for how to apply. So the application is very simple. You don't need to spend any time on this at all. Um, essentially, you'll be given a list of loads of projects. You just have to go through, see which ones are interesting to you, uh, and then just say why, you're, why you want to do it, and then what you will get out of it. Uh, so you probably have about a month to think about it. So we got our first correspondence about this at the start of February, and the application was one month later. So that's plenty of time. So you know, keep it in the back of your head. It might be something to fall back on. Um, random another thing is that if you're in the School of Physics uh, in your third year, because it's actually for third years, you have to do this module called communications and then during February you have this assignment where you essentially just have to do a literature review of something you're interested in. So if you want to do like two birds, one stone, uh, just choose a supervisor you're interested in, uh, look through their past, you know, whatever they were working on recently and then you can just write about that in your module. And then, you know, since this is done by School of Physics, then you can say, oh, I'm, I'm interested in this, uh, I'm interested in this project. And, you know, you can say, oh, yeah, I've already written about this in this, in this module. And, you know, that might be something that could help, help with the application. Uh, another thing is that uh, there's less competition if you're a TV. So it just is what it is. I'm sorry. 
Um, okay, so here's just an example of some projects that came up. I would say about half of them, actually no, less than half, I'd say probably a third of them were some way computational or theoretic. Um, so obviously any, any one that was involving anything analytical whatsoever, all the TPs kind of just uh, gobbled them up and then the rest were just um, experimental pretty much. So uh, I'll be honest, I didn't read at all anything about the experimental ones because I just wasn't interested in it. Uh, I chose this first one, which was with Stefan Hutzler. So if you know anything about him, he loves hacking essentially. Uh, and it was computational in nature, right? There was a little bit of analytical work, which was kind of like geometric. Um, it was mostly just doing Python simulations. Um, but yeah, so also for myself did it, and also Luke Hodgkiss also did a theoretical one. So if you're interested in what doing one more theoretical project would be, you could ask me or ask Luke. Uh, Luke more so than me. His one was more theoretical than mine. Um, and of course, I've listed, um, I just went back last year, I've listed all the uh, supervisors that were there. So if you see these names and you think any of them you get along with, then maybe have a look out. They might be offering one or more uh, projects. Uh, I've also uploaded the PDF of all the 15 projects on the Discord, so you can have a look through those, see if there's anything interesting. But essentially, you can kind of predict what's going to come up. If you know your lecturer well, you probably know uh, what their current research projects are anyway. So, you know, just essentially um, just get to know your lecturers and then, you know, something might come up. Uh, and just to briefly explain how, how my research experience went. So, uh, compared to everyone else, I think I had probably the most hours out of anyone. I'm pretty much spending like almost up to 40 hours a week in person. And I was having essentially daily meetings that would last for several hours. Um, so I know, for example, Luke Hodgkiss, his one was mostly online and he was putting in something like 20 hours a week. So again, this is something you would have to think about beforehand. You know, what is it like working with uh, various uh, lecturers in the School of Physics? Um, and what I was working on was a specific model for um, self-sphere interactions. So actually, if you look in the corner, you can see these spheres are actually getting deformed because uh, they're getting sort of squished together. and then. We're trying to see well would uh, the different patterns you get with this soft model interaction be different than what we see experimentally with hard spheres. So you know, I got a lot of data. I wrote a simulation. Uh, I was also helping out one of his PhD students uh, to make his uh, Python more efficient. Um, and then with the results, they might be published, but I know for a fact that the journal that Stefan always applies to, they always take like years and years to for them to publish. So. Uh, that's another thing to consider. If you're looking to get uh, authorship on a paper, then maybe have, you know, just reach out and say how likely it is that you actually get that out of it. Because, you know, if you're relying on that, you might, you know, maybe just don't hold your breath. Um, so other skills, right? So I had to do group presentations just internally, essentially with uh, his collaborators. So it was my, it was, Stefan, it was uh, Matthias Mobius for some of the meetings, and then plenty of uh, Zoom meetings, essentially, with collaborators abroad. At one stage, I got invited to a packing conference in Aberystwyth in Wales, uh, so I could have had the chance to present there. Unfortunately, uh, I was busy around that time, but you know, uh, that would be a great experience. Um, and most importantly, uh, once you finish, uh, it's very likely that your supervisor will be able to help you write an application if you want to do further research in the area, especially with the IRC funding, right? So if you want to get IRC funding, the deadline is so, so early into the, into the next semester, and the application is so long, there's pretty much no way you'd be able to write it on your own. So if you're doing any sort of summer research with, um, with any of the lecturers here in the School of Physics, they'll give you a good dig out, essentially, to write a good application. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. Any questions? Yeah. So does this work third years? Yes. Um, it's, I don't know. They might, they might introduce it maybe to second years, because as I said, they based the applications off your results from second year. Because uh, I guess maybe probably for first year for COVID, maybe they didn't really care that much about results. 
So definitely third years, maybe second years, uh, keep an eye on your email. One thing I will say is that not a lot of people knew about this for some reason. I guess people sort of skimmed over it in the emails. Like there wasn't a lot of discussion about it on the group chat and then someone found out about it like right near the deadline so no one had time to really go through it. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on your emails. Just in general, like, because you get loads of random opportunities uh, that lecturers you know, might have research opportunities, but then they'll, they'll never mention it in person, so just definitely uh, make sure you're keeping up to date on that sort of thing. Uh, I would probably say physics. Uh, well, they have access to your transcript anyway, so you don't need to include that, but uh, it's, it's hard to tell. Like, they didn't really give much guidelines. They didn't really give a breakdown of this, so for all I know, it could just be like whether your supervisor likes you or not. Um, not many people applied, and pretty much everyone got their first preference. So yeah, it's hard to see. It's hard to tell um, what separated like the winners from the losers. But I mean, if you really want it, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll just get it. So uh, yeah, just do good in your exams in second year, which kind of goes for all of these. Hula boola. thanks guys. Uh, oh yeah, and then here's the the final uh, summary of everything. So maybe like drop a tweet, drop a picture of that. Actually, yeah, on that note, there's, um, these are a lot of work, not up to date. And um, just FYI, uh, we made it last year, and there's not a lot of information to put in. Also, if you hit the next uh, thing there, anything that you can find um, is on the website. So I would look there for any update, update information. We'll probably put what uh, Mike was saying as well. Um, yeah, and for people who are asking about this being recorded, it is. It should be up in less than a week or so. And the internships and the slides will be sent out as well. So thanks to Mikey, thanks for everyone, and I'll let you guys go.